your the CEO of your company basically by your posture once you're seated you can actually tell that this person looks like a very important person in the reception because he's not going to sit down or she's not going to sit down in a very slouchy position you always know somebody who has got that grace and elegance when they sit because it's all part of your branding mm -hmm. it's all part of the packaging mm -hmm. the way you sit and, you, and even if you think people are not watching you people are watching you you see it has to be part and parcel of the way you actually present yourself Yes. What is that sitting position that could suggest that this person may be afraid or fearful or something? Maybe yes. you're in a meeting and then, you know, yes. you go all... Closed. Anything closed suggests that you have anxiety, you're afraid, even when you're going for an interview. So the moment you sit down, you automatically close in. So your hands are closed, your body is tightened, your legs are in, and literally your head is down. That shows there's an element of anxiety and fear. In, in the whole positioning, because you know they say body language, action speaks louder than words. And you know body language is saying so much without saying a single word. And that, at that point in time, especially when you're going in to meet someone for a meeting, you have to show an air of confidence. And the way you sit down actually exhibits whether you have confidence or not, mm -hmm. you see. And that, that's the whole thing. So I, I always implore people to ensure that whether you're sitting at the airport or you're sitting waiting for a meeting or you're even sitting at the dining table, everything communicates. So if you're sitting at the dining table, for instance, once you're seated at the dining table, your hands need to be on top of the table and not below. Because some people say, should my hands be under the table like this? No, no, once you're seated at the tiny dining table, you have your napkin on your mm -hmm. laps, always make sure you show your hands because open, open gestures mm -hmm. actually is a positive sign. It shows you have confidence, you have assertiveness, and you know what you're doing. Sitting down is in different places, different meanings, all right? So you're even, even at work, you know, and it's an open office. How do you sit? So some people sit with all their legs wide open or they sit anyhow. Again, remember, how you sit in the office is going to be different from how you sit at home. Now, let, let, let me quickly go to home because yes. you're, when you're at home, okay, mm. I want this my home anyway. I want to feel yeah. relaxed. And so I'm just seated in a way that I can, this is my home. How, what does it say in terms of, you know, because if that's what you do all the time, then you get outside your home, you forget that, okay, this is not... Absolutely. My space. This yes. is a public space. Yeah. I mentioned the three S's, so the striding, walk, um, striding, sitting and standing. They are all habitual. So like, like walking, the way you started walking when you were young, as you, get, as you become an adult, um, if you have swag in your, in your walk, you're going to have that swag all the way up to, yes, up, up to being an adult. Yes. Yes. You know, the way swagging, was, yes. You know, the same thing with standing. If you stand and you always tend to have your head to the left or right, that's typically how you're going to be all the time until someone tells you you might not know. The same thing with sitting. If you sit anyhow at home, all right, when you go outside, it's become habitual and that's how you will sit. And that's why you have to make that conscious effort to make sure that where am I? Who am I with? Which mm -hmm. environment am I? And make sure that you sit properly because everything really does communicate, you know. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you, you'd be surprised, even at interviews, they're watching every little thing about you. Your positioning, I mean, okay, you've gone to see a very important client, for example. How do you present yourself in the presence of a client? And sitting down and all of that makes sense. Do you slouch? Do you, you know, do you have one hand on your skin or you're, are you touching here, there, or every? Or are you fidgeting? Even fidgeting as you sit down actually has another way of sitting showing that you actually lack the, um, the, the, the pose and the posing and the posture and the positioning that is required of people at a certain level. So see what some people do. So they're sitting down and then they, they have to hold something like a pen or something and then to just like keep them busy. Does that in any way yeah. to use them? It, it's, it's, negative, it's, it's, it's basically called negative body language. So you're seated, you're at a meeting. Um, sometimes, you know, most times, especially if you're talking, you're talking and you're fidgeting with your pen. As you're talking, people are busy watching your pen. They're not even listening to what you're saying. So you, you tend to distract people when you're saying something and you're busy doing something else. Now, if you're sitting down waiting for something and nobody's looking at you, that's a different thing. You know, that's a different thing. But you're scratching your head, so you know, um, you're sitting down, touching your nose or your ears or whatever. It's a complete distraction. And okay. again, it doesn't speak well to your entire brand. Mm. Okay, we'll take a moment <laughs> and we'll be back shortly, Janet, to round up on that. Okay. Don't go away.
Welcome back, our closing moments with Janet. So, Janet, um, we've talked about sitting, crossing your leg and all that, yeah. but I want to do something right now. Okay. Um, as we talk about sitting in a relaxed environment, mm -hmm. let's like a beach or a lounge. So, I saw a picture of a man sitting this way. Oh. This is supposed to be a relaxed <laughs> environment, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. But how does that look? Very negative. Okay. Thank you. Very negative. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very negative because it's way too open. It's too open. And, you know, um, people might not say it, but they will feel uncomfortable with, with someone sitting very open like that. Uh, I mean, as much as the person may feel, uncom may feel very comfortable, by the way. He might actually be feeling like I'm yeah, the boss. Of like, course. Uh, Yes, so a little element of arrogance, you know, but um, it's comfortable. It's the kind of thing you do among your guys, among your friends, you know, but more in a more enclosed environment, you know. But if you're in a public place, and a social place, and it's too open like that, it's very negative because some people will say, what's wrong with that man? Can't he sit down properly? You know, they'll even say that it's not, it's improper sitting. So even in, mm -hmm. in a public lounge, you shouldn't even no, no, try no, that? No, 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 no. You're having a sitting room gathering or something, that's different. You're among close, you know, near and dear. But, you know, it's really important that when you're seated, be very cognizant of the people that are around you. And I guess, you know what, when you're sitting in an uncomfortable way, you know yourself. Even though it looks calm, you know that it's a little bit of a compromising position. You know, crossing your legs is nice, it looks cool, it looks comfortable, but you can't cross your legs everywhere. For example, mm -hmm. you're at a, di a dining table. You really can't cross your legs because you're going to literally hit under the table. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you're in a conference seating environment where it's very tight between you and the next you seat, for example, you're on the plane, and sometimes if you're in the, the, um, the class Economy. where there's so little room for you to sit, barely can you cross your feet because you're going to feel uncomfortable anyway. So there's places where as much as you like um, crossing your legs, some people like it all the time. You just can't sit like that. So sometimes you do have to sit with your two feet together like this. But be always mindful, especially when you're going for trainings or places where lots of people will be there. There's nothing to cover your, 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 the front of your you know, your legs, most times people tend to forget themselves. They really do. And I always have to say too, remember when you're seated like this, even when your skirt touches your knee and it seems like it's a reasonable length, mm -hmm. remember when you sit down, your skirt is going to rise mm -hmm. up for sure. And you're going to show more of your legs. And you have to always be mindful of in between the skirt because it does have a hollow and it may mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. And that's why we always say, please cross your legs, slant your legs to the right or left first and cross at the ankle. I wish I had a better way of showing this. Mm -hmm. So my legs are together, I'm slanting to the right, and then I'm crossing them. Crossing them seals, it locks it up. It locks it up. So the tendency for me to open up yes. is not it's, there. Yeah. If, I don't cross, if I don't seal it with crossing at the ankles, there's a tendency it will open. And again, when you're wearing a short skirt as well, I would say with all my dear ladies out there, and you know the skirt is short, it, 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 only, is, it only makes better sense if you carry a scarf with you in your bag mm -hmm. at I, any I point in that, time. I see that uh, yes. often So that, now. you know, for convenience, because you don't want to make other people uncomfortable, that's the reason, then you always cover your leg with a scarf, especially when you know you're in the forefront and, you know, there's a chance that many people can see you. Don't forget there are cameras, and all of this all around you. So sometimes always have a scarf in your bag at any point in time where you might need to bring it out to cover your bare skin. Finally. Okay, let's so let's look at yes. Oh, because because the beach. The beach is supposed yes. to be where you want to relax, yes, and, you're and also then you clothed, find all sorts you know? of bikinis <laughs> for mm -hmm. the ladies, and you know the shorts. Yes. How well should you be relaxed? On well, that? you know, it, it, a lot of it depends on where you are. You know, there are some countries where they just don't like exposing their body, and that makes sense, culture-wise. There are some countries where it's like, wow, sun, we don't get it enough. Let's expose ourselves and go under the sun. Of course, a lot of health reasons, are, risks are there, but when you're seated as well, it also makes common sense that you don't sit in an uncompromising compromising position. You know, uh, as much as everybody's exposed to the sun and to the ambience and the environment, you need to make sure that always have legs closed as much as possible. And if you want to as well, you know, you have your extra towel or extra scarf or whatever, but um, sitting in the beach, you're most likely likely going to be lying down most times if you're out basking or even if you're not um, lying down you're also you're half lying down on a chair mm -hmm. and okay. half seated okay. <laughs> thank you very wow. much Janet
etiquette coach. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your insight with us. Mm -hmm. So as we back for the home stretch, please don't go away. Jesus.